welcome back. Uh, Mark is still looking good this afternoon. We've got 20 minutes or so to go in trade and uh, still holding forth. Uh, at about 7,200. Uh, Nirmal Jain, Chairman IFL, joining us this afternoon. Nirmal, good to have you with us, and especially on a day when there's so much cheer around. Are you still, uh, are you also positive or optimistic on the way forward from here, or uh, are you seeing this as a temporary respite? No, I'm positive on the market in India. Uh, you know, I think, uh, uh, so on the budget also I'm positive, and in India I'm positive from medium to uh, long term. And I don't think uh, I'm qualified to predict the market for next one, one month, two months, or very short term. Absolutely. But Nirmal, even talking from a long-term point of view, and given some of the uh, intent that was uh, vocalized yesterday in the budget, do you feel that we're on the right track when it comes to growth? Uh, you know, do you see particularly sectors that are... Uh, are really counting on uh, that revival when it comes to demand, actually seeing uh, you know, a, a bit of um, resurgence going forward? Yeah, so one of the key uh, pleasant surprises has been that uh, finance minister and the government has stuck to the fiscal, fiscal discipline and the fiscal consolidation path. You know? So the fiscal deficit target they have kept at 3.5% and that too with the realistic assumptions about tax revenue and expenditure. Uh, so I think that is what is uh, viewed positively by uh, by the market, the large investors or uh, I would say institutional investors and not, not retail investors as such, but FIs and uh, local funds. I think they are looking at the macro picture in uh, that perspective because that should trigger uh, rate cut also. RBI's requirement for rate cut, you know, that government should make sure that fiscally they don't uh, get out of control. So I think uh, that has been done. So market is expecting and also India INC or corporate sector is expecting a rate cut and rate cut will change the sentiment for investment and uh, so that has another positive impact on the uh, private sector investment cycle as well as the market from the sentiment perspective. Uh, so I think that is one. Other than, well, uh, other than that, uh, the total outlay for rural sector uh, you know, aggregate uh, including the share to be uh, brought in by states has been almost doubled. So that should have a positive impact on the demand side of it because there's a consumption-led story should uh, get its fuel from there, uh, whether it's FMCG sector or two-wheelers or consumer durables, and that basically uh, uh, should revive the sentiment and the growth, uh, uh, you know, in some way. Apart from that, you know, there's significant increase in our, you know, road and railways. Uh, the transport sector has the biggest multiplier impact on the economy. So on the whole, uh, people are looking at these things and also the much feared a long-term capital gains tax or you know inheritance tax, all those uh, they have not been and the government have deferred or at least you know maybe decided not to uh, b bring them. So I think these are uh, positive developments. And as far as wealthy and rich people are concerned, you know they have to pay a bit more tax, but they will take it in their stride, uh, given that that money is used to make sure that every village has a pakka road and every household in village has uh, cooking gas. So uh, I think more or less you know the broader. Uh, Direction of the budget is, uh, is in the positive and right direction. So, uh, from the market point of view, I think that is what market is looking at today. In a day or two, you know, these things get, uh, get absorbed or discounted completely. Market in the short term will look for global cues, uh, global financial markets, emerging market sentiment. Uh, and I think medium to long term fundamentals will again uh, play their role and uh, they'll get reflected in corporate earnings in a few quarters and from there, uh, so if you ask me, uh, budget, I think is positive. There's nothing, you know, uh, 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 government has not uh, spent too much despite OROP and uh, uh, seventh pay commission, you know, providing for that. They try to keep, uh, uh, you know, things under control. And uh, uh, from a medium term perspective, India is uh, perhaps one of the better destinations uh, given the fastest growing economy. Uh, Things are moving in the right direction. Number of procedural hassles government is trying to remove, trying to address them. Uh, so I, you know, I don't see any reason why things shouldn't. You know, if you have a three-year perspective, then Indian stock and Indian equities should do very well. Afternoon, Nirmal. Uh, I, I wanted to address this question from the perspective of buying public sector banking stocks. 
Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, what, some would say that the health of the economy is reflected by the health of the banks. If things are going to recover in the next 12 to 24 months, would you say that the right place to be or to play the market, so to speak, or to be participating in the market, the best way would be with the PSU banks because perhaps as the earnings improve, they probably will see the health improving first. Uh, maybe a word of caution there. One is that public sector banks require 3 lakh crores or maybe a little more than that by 2018-19 to recapitalize their balance sheet uh, uh, at the existing level. I'm not, I'm not saying that the capital for growth. Uh, so as against requirement of 3 lakh crores, the budget provides only for 25,000 crores. So that is a paltry, small sum, not adequate. Having said that, I think that our finance ministry as well as the policy makers understand the gravity of the situation and the problem and what they are thinking is that maybe different solutions. So they are just not trying to use uh, taxpayers' money or the budget resources for problems of the past because they are confident that incrementally problems will not be created in the future. Uh, so they are looking at divesting maybe some of the PSU banks, consolidating, merging them and just trying to uh, work out a solution. Uh, there was some uh, you know, reference to uh, use of RBI's balance sheet because RBI has got huge uh, liquid resources. Uh, so I think that what government will work on is try and find an innovative solution to the problem. But at this point in time, that is not in sight. So where does that leave us uh, from investing in PSU Bank's point of view? So what will happen is that the cleansing of the balance sheet has yet not fully done. Only Bank of Baroda has come forward and said that we are done with all our NPAs and we don't need capital uh, you know, in the foreseeable future. But other than that, most large PSU banks have warned that the our, our cleaning up exercise is not over. It might be another five quarters, that is by 2017 end. So from an ordinary investor's point of view, you won't know what can come and hit you and how much. So if the problem is known, then it's very easy for you to make an assessment uh, that, okay, what is the adjusted uh, book value, what is the adjusted net worth, and what are the multiples that I'm giving. So on the whole, PSU banks will do well as a sector, and there'll be some stocks where you know returns can be extraordinary given that their valuations are very attractive but at this point in time the fear of unknown uh, that you know what kind of NPAs will come in next few quarters uh, will at least keep an investor like me away from the sector. Okay so that's banks. Um, Nirmal I want to understand how you would allocate your uh, portfolio strategy now. Has there been any changes and even if not what are you betting on going forward? Uh, you know one part of it is the consumption part. Within that would you look at urban or rural? The other part of it is the increased focus on sort of infra rail roads, ports. Is that something that would figure in your portfolio? Yeah I think today you have an opportunity to build a balanced portfolio. You can invest in FMCG, you can invest in select pharma and IT stocks also. This would also do well and uh, uh, given the global environment, you know, you always need to hedge against the depreciation in the rupee. Uh, other than that, I'll also look at uh, cement sector because uh, the focus on housing as well as infrastructure should make sure that cement sector does well. There's no, no significant new capacity uh, in pipeline. Uh, other than that, I'll also look at uh, uh, infra and within that sectors for road and uh, you know, uh, rail, uh, uh, railways also. So I think you have a fairly large choice of sectors to build a, uh, a portfolio and I would say that one should have a bottom-up approach to look at the you know, companies because some of the companies in infrastructure are, uh, uh, you know, are heavily into debt because of the past problems so maybe you know, keep away from them. Uh, within power sector also uh, look at transmission and distribution, maybe there can be some good stocks there. So you can build a balanced portfolio today from multiple sectors, I think that's a uh, you know, uh, the equity side of it. If you allocate your asset, I would say even debt funds or uh, fixed income products uh, merit some allocation because interest rates are uh, now, it appears that they are headed uh, downward and southward. Uh, so maybe next two to three years, uh, I think we'll have a scenario where interest rates keep coming down and uh, you can have a good uh, appreciation in your debt portfolio. Also, of course, they can't be compared with equity for return, but not even for risk. So when you are balancing your asset allocation, you can look at both the uh, both the instruments. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Nirmal. Good so to much. get a sense of where things stand uh, with you as well this afternoon. All right. Let's introduce um, Vijay Chopra and Mohit Gaba also joining Ashwin Iron Studio today.